I thought it would be just sort of worthwhile to um, go through a little bit since this is an active week on the Hill for the Senate on cyber legislation. Um, some remarks just sort of going through what the different pieces of cybersecurity legislation you might have heard about in the last few months. Um, I think tomorrow the Senate is supposed to vote on, on cloture for the Lieberman Collins Cybersecurity Act, um, which I think was introduced around April um, and was a new version of that bill was filed this week. Um, and if you've sort of seen some of the press attention on the information sharing section, I think most of the privacy groups that CDT has, is affiliated with um, have come out in strong praise of, of the, some of the privacy changes that were made to that section, um, which isn't to say that the, the bill is perfect. Um, I think that, that you'll hear about some very important amendments that um, should be introduced and, and have a vote on that would improve the bill. Um, but in terms of comparing um, the Lieberman Collins bill to some of the other cybersecurity bills um, in the House from a, from a civil liberties perspective, um, it's in much, much better shape. Um, and so I think sort of in terms of the work that, that my group does in this area is we focus on, on a number of components when we're looking at um, information sharing proposals. Um, and what that really means is um, I think all of the legislation is, is trying to uh, construct a system where companies are in a position where they can voluntarily share um, information that they have identified as relevant to a cybersecurity threat with the government um, for the purposes of, of enhancing cybersecurity, um, not only with, in the private sector, um, but also within the government as well. Um, and, and CDT has come out and, and, and said that there you know, probably is a need for a change in the law to permit some type of sharing. Um, particularly within industry to make sure that, that private companies are able to um, share information to better protect themselves from incoming malware attacks. Um, and I think that the tricky area from a civil liberties perspective is when the government is in a position of receiving that information, um, making sure that that information is limited truly to cybersecurity threats um, and what the government can then do with that information once it receives it. 